This is the Third Heaven Traveler, Andrew Sheets with you. Today I want to talk about the Abyss of Babylon. And before we begin, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this great opportunity you've granted me to share with my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. And for anyone who's watching this who doesn't know you, Lord, as their own Savior, I pray that their eyes could be open. And for those believers, Lord, who are not aware of some of these things, I pray, Lord, that we can learn together. Father, thank you that you brought us into your marvelous light. And if you're listening and you don't know Jesus in a personal way, I pray that you come to him now and believe that your heart, I pray that your heart may be open, that you may believe in your heart that Jesus Christ literally came to earth he died on the cross for your sins and that he was buried according to the scriptures and that he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And if you believe this, you are truly saved. You belong to Jesus Christ. He is yours and you are his for eternity. There's nothing you can add to this it's simply belief and faith alone, by faith alone, by God's grace and not of works. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity in your most precious loving name. We pray you come soon in Jesus' name. Amen. The Abyss of Babylon. All scripture is in the King James Bible. My followers and subscribers know why I say King James. If you don't, please read the links. And related issues of the Laodicean Church of today, read links. And I want to make a major clarification in this video and in the blog. This work is not meant to insult or attack Catholics or Jews or evangelicals who identify themselves as Zionists or any religion for that matter. This purpose is not to beat up on another religion or another faith or your beliefs, not to beat you up for it or to attack you. The major rank and file Catholic, and I have a lot of Catholic friends, uh, Jew evangelical Christian, they have no idea who and what is behind the work of their organized religious practice. I, like Paul, <clears throat> who came out of religion myself, used to be a hardcore Christian Zionist. Let me tell you, I was the king Zionist of all Zionists. I've been to Israel. I was a staunch, staunch, rabid Zionist. I would take on anybody who would claim that uh, that the uh, government of Israel is nothing but God's very own people. Um, now, let me say this carefully, and I will give you links. Yes, the Jews are God's chosen people. Yes, there is a remnant that are his. Yes, God has not forgotten or forsaken Israel. Yes, Israel is blessed right now. And right now, God is preparing them for the time of Jacob's trouble, but only a remnant is going to come out of this. The government of Israel, as it stands, is the Zionist state. The Star of David is the Remphram. The Star of Remphram, it has nothing to do with God or belief in following God. Nothing at all. But back on Paul, and I have the links here, why being an anti-Zionist, which I am now, is not has nothing to do with anti-semitism nothing at all but they want you to believe that because I do not believe in Zionism I follow the Bible that I'm an anti-semite that, that is so far from the truth and God knows my heart I love the Jewish people and as I will explain here I love the Catholics and anyone I love them and therefore this demands I tell the truth Look at Paul. Paul, of course, was the Jews' Jew. He was the most devout and zealous 
but found Jesus Christ in the most powerful way, and he came out of his religious practice. Yes, I used to be a devout evangelical. I was also a devout zealous Israel first Zionist. But by God's grace, I came out of this movement, and I found a profoundly deep, and I'm going to say deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, and through the power of God's grace, my eyes have been opened, and I pray yours be too. When we talk about religion, and I don't care if you're a Hindu, a Muslim, a Jew, an evangelical Christian, you're in a religion, and yes, Christian, going to your church building operation, yes, you can say whatever you want, but there's a quote here I want to share with you. And this is called Ecclesiology, says University of Basel professor Carl Ludwig Schmidt. And e Ecclesiology, basically, Ecclesia comes, that means, it comes from Ecclesia, which is church. It's simply Christology, and this is the study and to the religious, the theological study of who Jesus Christ is. And Professor Schmidt says, that all sociological attempts to explain the church are futile because the church can only be explained by its link to the person and work of Christ. What a novel concept. The church is the body of Christ, and Christ is the head of the body. And here's the scriptures. These metaphors stress the unity of Christ and his people, and the term head specifically stresses that he is leader or ruler over the church. He exercises a position of power and authority over his people, his people. I can't stress this enough, listeners. The early church witnessed the headship of Christ by recognizing no individual man as the head of the church. Leadership was always invested in the plurality of leaders, first apostles and soon elders. This was true of the universal church and the local church, which is a replica or a miniature of the universal church. In other words, we're the body of Christ. The primacy of scripture in its teaching that Christ is the sole head, the chief shepherd of the church, was denied in practice soon after the death of the apostles. A plurality of elders gave way to mon, uh, a monarchical bishop, a monarch. They set themselves as heads, and the institutional church was ultimately ruled by the supreme pontiff, i.e. the pope in Rome. Even the Protestant churches, the pastor is the head, as the officer of the flock is firmly entrenched in tradition, a tradition that denies Christ his place as head of the church. Yes, well written. In my blog that I put up here, in my link, I tell you why I came out of church building operations 501c3. Please see my research. Please, I beg you, open your eyes. I want to make a comment that the study where I got this link from, they still put Jesus Christ. It's ironic. They say Christ is the center of everything. Amen. And then they still call him the second person of the. It's not the second person of the Godhead. This is referring to the Trinity. Christ is not the second person. He is the first and only person. There's only one person, the visible image, which means person, body. And it's all in my Godhead versus Trinity studies. Please read it. In the past 15 years, I've devoted my life to spreading the truth and to call out false teaching not through hatred, not because, oh, look at me, I'm better than you. No, but through love that eyes may be opened as mine were opened. If you read carefully Romans chapters 9 through 11, you'll see that Paul completely, in a literary interlude, he completely stops addressing the church because all of his epistles, what, are to the church, to the dispensation of grace, the 
the dispensation of the church age, right? But in Romans 9, 11, he, chapters 9 through 11, he hits the brakes. He shifts all of his attention to Israel, the Jews. He pours his heart out. He loves him. I love you, dear Jew. Oh my God, I love you. Even the secular, I'm going to just say the secular Jews I've run into. Uh, I'm retired military. I ran into, I was overseas and an IDF officer who had had a few cocktails went off on me calling me one of those fanatical Christians who really believes that God saved Israel in the Six Day War. And by the way, I was in Israel shortly after the Six Day War and saw the tanks and the Golan. I was up in the Golan Heights. And it's just a miracle. But yet, many Israelis, yeah, they'll say, yeah, there's some divine presence, but there's a lot of secularism. Uh, Israel's far, far, far from God, trust me. Uh, and, and, and I say even to you all out there, those Jews that are in your Zionist powerful state of just wanting to capture the world through your Zionism, I pray your eyes be open. And read Romans, where Paul's heart was so broken, he was even willing to be lost so that his own people could be saved. And like I said, I truly love Catholics and Jews and Christians and evangelicals. They, like me, are working hard. You're out there, you're working hard to raise a family, be good citizens, and love and serve God in the way you've learned. I pray the reader knows this and understands this. There are Jews. Catholics, evangelical Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, who will wake up and find the truth. And I pray that my work may be used by God to do that. I've talked at length with devout Jews, Catholics, evangelicals, and Muslims, and Buddhists, and others who love God and strive to serve Him as they know Him exist. And please know I love you. But again, perfect love demands the truth be told. Please read my link to understand that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. Please read my link on why the false prophets of today are doing the exact same thing as in the days of Jeremiah. They're called Judaizers. And the Judaizers, even Paul had to struggle so mightily with him, he even got into Peter's face because Peter got caught up into it. And now I come to the title of my work. I needed to give you that background. I needed to take these minutes. The title of this work is The Abyss of Babylon. Yeah, I found myself back here at the subject of Babylon again when this morning, actually this is a couple days now since I've written this blog, I read a morning email blog post by Joel Rosenberg and yes, I love Joel as well, and I pray his eyes be open. But Joel Rosenberg, honestly, he's a brilliant, zealous writer who is also an evangelical Zionist. He's a modern-day Judaizer, and he's being led, willingly or unwillingly, to lead others astray. And I have an extensive study on Joel Rosenberg. See in my links and notes below. So this morning I read Joel's blog and I was really surprised it really grabbed my attention because his blog is all about Babylon, the great ancient city, is once again rising from the ashes just as Bible prophecy predicts. And I thought, huh, I know quite a bit by God's grace through study about Babylon, Mystery Babylon, and Bible prophecy. And I'm wondering what Joel has to say on this, but I knew being Joel being a Zionist, being a evangelical, who's really a Judaizer, who's a bit confused, he's a Messianic Jew, and read my links in there where Messianic Jews have a major identity crisis. So I was sure that Joel would say what he would say, and he did say that. So it was not a surprise 
that Joel wants to pump his non-Bible reading, low-informed evangelical following into the absurd notion that Iraq rising again is a great is a great civilization is actually Babylon and even mystery Babylon spoken of in Bible prophecy. Specifically, Joel is referring to Revelation chapter 17 and 18 and tying this in with future prophecy and, and, and distorted this with a mangled interpretation of Psalms, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, who, of course, all these scriptures in the Old Testament refer multiple times to ancient Babylon and its devastating impact on Israel and the future impact in, um, on God's remnant and its future spiritual role of the Antichrist. There are distinct references in the Old Testament that describe, of course, the actual historic existence of Babylon, which proceeded from Nimrod's Tower of Babel. That's where we get Babylon. And see my study on why God said, Jacob, I love Esau, I hate it. See where I write a study about how the Nephilim demon seed of the Canaanite Baal worship and the fall and cause of great apostasy to Israel. See where this carried through to the Christ crucifixion. It was the Pharisees, this Pharisaical the Sanhedrins, the haters of Christ. He, they did not recognize Jesus Christ. They still don't recognize Jesus Christ. And these bloodlines connected from the Canaanites, God's, and connect the dots from Canaan to Phoenicia to Carthage to Baal, and even now into this Trinity teaching into the Pope and to the Catholic Church, why this still exists today. I'm going to show you this. This will blow your mind. And this ties in with my Godhead versus Trinity teaching. See my other videos and links. So let's go this. Let's look at this carefully. Joel Rosenberg. I, I, I let me just click on this article here. He he is a brilliant writer, and he talks about Babylon, the iconic ancient city, is rising from the ashes, just as Bible prophecy predicts. And so Joel writes. He says skeptics and cynics are abound, but there's growing evidence. The Iraqi government is serious about rebuilding this ancient wonder of the world. He has all this stuff here, and he says that in 2006, Joel said he wrote uh, his first. I didn't know this. Uh, I'm not a Joel Rosenberg uh, book reader. Some I know many people who love his work. Uh, to me, I don't know. I, I, it's just something in my genre. But, uh, but Joel apparently wrote this nonfiction book called Epicenter. When he explained that according to Bible prophecy, the ancient and long forgotten city of Babylon will one day be literally rebuilt. Joel said he also explained that the once so powerful nation of Babylon, the country which we now call Iraq, Iraq will one day rise to become the most wealthy and powerful nation in the world according to Old Testament and New Testament prophets and apostles. Few believed me at the time, fewer still cared, but things are changing, Joel says, and it's time for an update. So he goes on and on. He referenced Tim LaHaye, Jerry Jenkins, that sold over 60 million books. Kevin Phillips, a uh, strategist, uh, is a skeptic. He writes, da, 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 but, but Joel makes his point to say, hey, it's happening now. Iraq is rising. There's change in the wind. It's going to be developed. This will be Babylon. It will rise again. Okay? So, that's what Joel's is. Uh, I've got the link in here. Encourage you to read it. And here's my response. And I come back and I says, uh, yeah, there's connections there. And I said, the Old Testament prophets, they connected perfectly to future prophetic significance of Babylon. Wait, and, and I have all the scriptures in here. Listener, reader, please know I do my research. I read and read and studied scripture. I've read these scriptures thoroughly. 
I've looked at both sides of this, and I want to tell you, in even the most far-fetched stretch of imagination, an honest person could never attach the actual country of Iraq to the reign of this foreign, of this new powerful religious reign of the Antichrist. It's coming. The time of Babylon, I'm talking Babylon, physical Babylon is Iraq, is a physical kingdom. It expired. It has been documented by both history. Please do your, your research. Babylon, the great country, ceased to exist thousands of years ago. And it's been documented. And, and, and Daniel even goes through it explicitly. Think about the image, the head of gold of the statue that Babylon, that Daniel revealed to King Nebuchadnezzar. That was Babylon. That existed. It was replaced by a lesser but another powerful kingdom of the Medes and Persians, the silver. And then they were overtaken by the Greeks. Of bronze and then the bronze were overtaken by the Romans which would split into the two legs of iron and now we're coming into this uh, what fifth era and that is the feet mixed with iron and clay of the ten kingdoms this is what we're coming into now Babylon itself will not rise again people read these scriptures in context and determine this for yourself now let me pause. Is Iraq restoring the ancient ruins? Yes. Is Iraq uh, putting, as all going back to, to early 2000 from his, uh, former Saddam Hussein, uh, putting emphasis on Babylon? Yes. But Joel wants you to believe that this is the Bible prophecy, that this country will be this, all of this spoken of in in Bible prophecy, liar. This is not true. But why is Joel doing this? All right, let's talk. <clears throat> His mission is like that of a Judas goat, just like Amir Tisfati. See all my work on Amir Tisfati. See this Ask Dr. Green, my work on him, and other Messianic Jews. They are hell-bent on misleading for the purpose of covering the truth. They, they cover the truth in the gospel of grace. They cover the truth in revealing what is actually going to happen in end times. Please read my extensive studies on Joel Rosenberg's ecumenical false teaching in, in, in notes below. So I use the word abyss in the title within the context of a great schism that exists when we talk about Babylon. It divides Bible scholars on two sides regarding Babylon and prophecy, specifically Mystery Babylon. Since Babylon is a major issue regarding Bible prophecy that really matters, yeah, it really matters, people. I'm going to show you why. It should be of no surprise that such a division, a schism, an abyss exists. I pray the reader praise for themselves to increase in wisdom and the knowledge of God that the Lord may open your eyes to see the truth. Since the true Christian is not going to be involved in this horror show that's coming involving Babylon, it's important for us to know the times so we can warn others and those who will be left behind to face these horrors. I also believe... <clears throat> Excuse me. I also believe that it's extremely important to understand why Joel Rosenberg and others mislead people into thinking Babylon and Bible prophecy is Iraq and Iraq rising again to exist as Babylon, mystery Babylon. And it is precisely for this reason I also use the word abyss in the context of Babylon. Mystery Babylon, in the context of the beast demon from the abyss. This tremendously powerful evil spirit who's been kept in the abyss by God's powerful archangel, who no doubt was the very one and the same 
demon who possessed the Greek ruler Antiochus Epiphanes, who desecrated the Jewish temple in 168 BCE, and who will also come out of the abyss and possess the Antichrist in his beast role, who will also desecrate the Jewish temple at the midpoint of the tribulation. Here is a great study on this subject. Now, before I do this, I want to pause here. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to see through Joel's misunderstanding, his deception, and why he would mislead people. Joel doesn't want people to see that this demon is not has anything to do with a country that's going to be... You, people will be watching, literally, oh, keep your eye on Babylon, meaning Iraq. They're meaningless right now. Nothing against the Iraqi people. I'm talking about Iraq is coming back as Babylon. It's meaningless. What's going to happen very soon is the rapture of the church. Those who belong to Jesus Christ will be taken, cut up, removed from the earth. Those who left behind starts the most horrific time in the history of mankind known as the time of Jacob's trouble, the a persona, a person who will come on the scene, will establish, quickly reestablish order because there will be total, all hell will break loose. The horse of the apocalypse, the horses will be, the Antichrist is revealed, he will sign a peace treaty with Israel. There will be world wars and famine and death and pestilence and the Antichrist will pull this all together miraculously and people will believe him. He'll call for peace when there will be no peace and Israel will fall into the trap of believing him and this man becomes obsessed or literally possessed with Satan's very being himself, this demonic being. And he will all of a sudden switch. He'll change masks and truly the Jews will know. That's why Jesus wrote in Matthew 24, when you see these things happen, when you see the desecration, the abomination of desecration, the, abo the, of the oblation, the cease of the oblation, the abomination in the temple, which was the same exact shadow, foreshadow, which Epiphanes did, uh, Antiochus did when he was in the temple. He, he had a pig slaughtered in the Jewish temple. I think it'll be very similar. Jesus said, don't even go get your coat, Jewish remnant. Run for the hills and only a remnant will be saved. This demon abyss, this uh, someone did, it's called the End Time Pilgrim. They did a great, great job on the demon from the abyss. This is going to happen, people. This is way beyond a country Babylon raising again. This is a spirit that's going to come up. So am I saying that Babylon is an evil spirit? No. This evil spirit will be controlled and run in coordination with a religious system that's already in place on earth today. Bear with me. Yes, dear reader. We're clearly told, connecting Psalms 35, verse 10, Jeremiah chapters 51, 52, Revelation chapters 13, Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapters 17 and 18 and 19, that Babylon and mystery Babylon in prophecy is not physical Iraq, but it's a religious perversion, I'm going to say a religious system that's delivered, promoted, and given to the people left behind in the tribulation by the false prophet to make people worship the Antichrist and take the mark, the 666, the mark of the beast. The physical location that connects this religious system is the revived Roman Empire. I will say again, this religious physical location is the revived Roman Empire. 
the Vatican, also known as the Catholic Church, which was developed and protected from the pharisaical spirit of the Antichrist of Judaism. The, not the Jewish remnant, God's chosen people, but that Antichrist spirit of the Pharisees, of the Nephilim bloodline, Ananias, the high priest, who brought Jesus Christ to the Romans and worked with the Roman government to crucify Jesus Christ, was not of the bloodlines of the Levitical priesthood of Aaron. I'm going to say this again. He was Herodian, the, of Ch Herod, the great, the great evil, evil, evil man came from the bloodlines of the Herodians who came from the Nephilim bloodlines. And it's all in there. Please do my research. Uh, the purpose of this is not to spend all my time in that. But these, this Pharisee spirit, they hated Jesus Christ so much, their hatred was unimaginable. That spirit of the Antichrist resides, and they deny Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They conspired with Rome to crucify Jesus Christ and to destroy Christianity. They later developed the Catholic Church as a highly structured religious order protected by the Jesuits. If you've never heard this before, I pray you do your own research, and I have links in here to study. Again, I must pause and tell you, dear listener, reader, I'm not one of these anti-Semites who's like, the Jews are evil. They're No, I love you, dear Jew. I pray your eyes be open. You've been hijacked by the Pharisees, by the New World Order Luciferian elite. The Pope is now bringing all faiths into one religion. He's bringing Islam, Christianity, and Judaism in all, and the New World religion. They're going to use Noahide laws, people, of Judaism and form a strict adherence to the major tenets of the other religion. And since the pagan trinity of Catholicism, yes, you Trinitarians, wake up. The trinity is not biblical. It comes from the Catholics. Godhead is biblical. I have extensive studies. Please read them. See my other videos. Read my blogs. It's all coming by mainstream Laodicean evangelicals today. They are conforming to the Jewish Kabbalah of triad. See notes. Please read my studies on biblical Godhead, not Trinity. I'm not going to take the time in this video. Now, when I made the statement that the Vatican, the Catholic Church, by the Jewish system of the Kabbalist, our Mystery Babylon the Great. There's a study, and it's in the links here, by Mystery, the Mystery of Babylon the Great by Edward Hendry. And my links are all in here. And also I have three really good studies on a thing I did by Mystery Babylon is the harlot. That's the Vatican, the Catholic Church. Please read that. Now, I want to say this. Eric, or Edward Hendry's work um, he comes out shockingly against uh, what the Pharisees, the false Jews are calling the Trinity. But then he also refers to the Trinity in a non-biblical non way versus the Godhead. So I'm confused by that. But he also does not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. He gets hung up on Sabbath keeping. And I don't agree with the way he's rightly dividing the word of God in the dispensation of grace. However, this work by Mr. Hendry, his research on Mr. Mystery Babylon is spot on. It's, it's incredible. But just bear in mind. So back on the subject, Joel Rosenberg is a Zionist. He's also an ecumenical leader. 
If you don't know what ecumenism, it means bringing all religions into one. And he embraces, Joel Rosenberg embraces the Vatican and Judaism. He's a Judaizer. He pretends to be an evangelical to bring in the evangelicals. Of course he would bury the truth that Babylon is really <laughs> the Catholic Church and the Jewish state of Israel and the New World Luciferian Order. Of course he wouldn't say that. Of course he would say, oh, let's look at Babylon. Hey, Iraq. The poor Iraqis, if they were even half awake to knew what Joel Rosenberg was doing, I would go to him and say, if I were Iraqi, I would say, study your Bible, you fake. Stop telling me that my country is going to be the great Babylon the Great. I've studied this for years, people. And I'm telling you that for years, I also, I was mesmerized by the highly sensational, I mean highly fictionalized fantasy of the godfather of Christian Zionism, Hal Lindsey. Hal Lindsey, who wrote the late great planet Earth in the 1970s, he's a mess. He is a Zionist. He completely misinterprets God's plan to restore the state of Israel, not the Jewish remnant of the kingdom of God. He plays right into the Vatican. We see this over and over again. Again, that all the Zionists and the New World Order evangelicals, they play right into the hands of the Vatican and the New World Order. And then later, this Tim LaHaye, Jerry Jenkins, a Masonic New World Order. It, <clears throat> links are down here in their Left Behind series that took the world by storm. We see them on one side of this debate. All siding with the Evangelical Papal New World, world Order and believing that ancient Babylon of Iraq today is going to be restored to greatness. And that the iconic ancient city is rising from the ashes, as, as does Joel Rosenberg write. And I've got notes down how I'll read you through my notes. I'll go into this later why Jenkins and Hal Lindsey and Tim LaHaye is where Joel Rosenberg is getting his information from. They're one of they're in the same part and parcel to him. But if you're taking scripture to fit your own agenda instead of allowing scripture to interpret scripture, you're always going to find yourself being led into error and into traps. And what saddens me the most in doing this study is one of my favorite eschological champions of premillennialism, uh, Dr. Tommy Ice. Uh, he even mangles the Babylon in Revelation, perhaps False teachers like Joe Rosenberg gobble this up and it fits their agenda so well. Uh, Thomas Ice is solid on the pre-tribulation rapture and on and on and on. And he gives a very accurate back, background describing what Babylon was and how it was the fomentation of man's rebellion against God going back to the post-flood Babel in Nimrod. However, if you study Dr. Rice's work, Here's where the wheels fall off regarding Babylon. I'm going to read a quote from Dr. Ice in his pre-tribulation website. Oh, I just want to say this real quick. He, Dr. Tommy Ice was not the founder of the pre-tribulation institute. It was actually Tim LaHaye. So, of course, they're going to be on the same page here. But Dr. Ice writes, Watch for Babylon to become a dominant force in the world religiously. Are you serious? Babylon religiously is a dominant force? That means that Islam is going to be controlling the world? Commercially, really, are you serious? And governmentally, for Revelation 17 and 18 predicts the destruction of the city and in order... To be the city those prophecies require, it must be rebuilt on a grand scale like in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Dr. Ice, you, you have literally lost your mind, sir. To compare the rebuilding of current day Iraq to be on the scale of ancient Babylon, you either are 
extraordinarily misinformed, extraordinarily narrow-minded, extraordinarily confused. And sir, I really question your... I'm going to call you out on this, sir. You're lying to your readers. You're lying. And you know you're lying. You have to know you're telling a lie here. How can Babylon be restored to its previous stature of the world's most greatest power? Please, stop it. This is not correct, and it's actually a glaring departure from what scriptures are actually telling us. Read the details in Dr. in Edward Hendry's work, Solving Mystery of Babylon. If you read what Dr. or Edward Hendry writes and compare it to what Dr. Ice writes, it shows you that Dr. Ice is talking out of his he's talking out of two sides of his mouth. And then you have other sensationalists and Zionists and their book pumping charlatans, these despicable people like Joel Richardson, who is a mess. He he tells readers, oh no, Mystery Babylon, that's Mecca. That's Mecca. They've got seven mountains. They've got seven hills. Uh, Mecca's got to be it. Islam will be the great. No, the reason why Joel Richardson, the reprobate, tells you that it's Mecca, is he wants to cover for his Zionist Israel. Yeah, you want people. Okay, go get those. Go get those Muslims. And sadly, Bible students like uh, these theologians like Derry Gilbert, they follow suit. And then you get confused souls by the late Dr. Van Imp, who was a mess in his theology, a mess in his eschatology. He, he taught, he was teaching people, oh, no, 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 mystery Babylon is the United States of America. Are you serious, you moron? Are you serious? People, if anyone would believe that Mystery Babylon is the United States, you obviously have not read carefully Revelation 17, 18 yourself. You've never read it. You've honestly never read it. You just take what they tell you. Oh, look, look, look. It says here the great merchants have done trade with the world. Oh, that's America. It, what it completely describes in Revelation 18 is the Catholic Church is America drunk on the blood of the saints? Do you know what that's saying, Dr. Van Imp? You, yeah, you're gone. You passed on. So if, as far as your legacy goes, I'm going to say your legacy, if you stand on that, you are going to be so embarrassed when you're showed the stupidity of your statement. And I'm not going to take the time to go on and list the many other reasons why the United States is not Mystery Babylon. In Bible prophecy. It's not Iraq people. It is the Catholic Church, the Vatican, and its control. Now, many people, including myself, believe that the Pope, and it could be this Pope, Francis, is it going to be the false prophet? Or he could even be the actual Antichrist himself. That's what the old, all the old Bible scholars thought, that the Pope, when the tribulation began, whatever Pope was in power would be the actual Antichrist. But it's that whole system, along with the Jewish Zionists, will bring in Islam. The three major world religions will become one in this Chrislam, in this Abrahamic covenant that Joel's pumping. Please read my stuff on that, people. That's what Babylon is. Tim LaHaye, he's a committed... He, it was a committed Zionist, New World Order Mason. He purposely skirts around Revelation 18 to make Babylon Iraq. Okay, that's my study. Here's my notes. Please read them on your own. Look at these links I have exposing Joel Rosenberg as an ecumenical Zionist New World Order false teacher. One, two, three, four, five. This makes six on him now. Please... Read why Joel is peddling the e the Abraham Accords peace agreement when they say peace, peace, peace. You know, jo Joel even ha had you as a Christian. You must pray for peace and safety. Okay. All right, Joel. We know you don't read your Bible. 
Uh, Amir Tasfati, yeah, thank God, Amir. I think he's he's led to bring in the evangelicals who believe in the rapture, which they should. Uh, their pre-tribulation rapture scripture, uh, Amir covers that. But listen to his other foul. Air, Amir is a foul, foul, foul bird. The repackaged Judaizer, this ass Dr. Brown, pathetic messianic who is so confused. Um... Uh, Read the link here on the Babylon Jews of Alexandria, like Philo. Philo hated Christ. Oh, yeah. He was a Jew and followed after the Canaanite gods. Connect the dots from Canaan to Phoenicia to Carthage to Baal worship. They slaughtered their own children. They burned their own children to Baal. Thousands and thousands and thousands of their children were slaughtered and God had enough and destroyed Israel for it. Read those connections, how this is connected to the Godheads, to the Trinity. Read how I expose Hal Lindsey. Oh man, when I grew up, I grew up in the 70s. Uh, actually, I was born and raised in the 60s, but by the 70s, I was a young man getting ready to go in the Navy. Read Hal Lindsey, what a Zionist. He's a pimp, charlatan, pumping it. Um, read Sitzer's work on exposing um, Hal Lindsey, although Sitzer makes some gra rather mistake, big mistakes himself, but he does expose Lindsey very well. Hal Lindsey is the father of apocalyptic Christian Zionism, man. Read, let's see, read in here, okay, read on the occult symbols of Tim LaHaye's books. Oh, it's scary. Yeah, he, Tim LaHaye was a messianic Zionist puppet. Yes, he was. The same woman that exposed Billy Graham, Dr. Kathy Burns, she is a brilliant woman. Dr. Burns lays it out. Tim LaHaye and uh, Jerry Jenkins, man. Masonics, they were behind it 100%. There, now listen, I want to talk about some uh, real quick here. Uh, other things that LaHaye, Tim LaHaye did wrong. Not only were they Masonic. Puppets, you should see the stuff they use, this, the symbolism they use for New World Order stuff. But the headquarters of the Antichrist is not, Babel, uh, not Babylon, as they put in their books and their movies and stories. Isaiah 13 is clear, people. Babylon has ceased to exist permanently. Babylon has ceased to exist permanently as a world center of power. It's not Babylon, uh, it's not Iraq, it's the Vatican, it will be in the Rome, the revived Roman Empire. Oh, and then, oh, that's okay, they will put their headquarters in Babylon, they're going to move from Rome to Babylon, okay. But it's not the restored country that this is talking about. The tribulation, also, Tim LaHaye has you believing that the tribulation begins well after the peace agreement signed with Israel. That's not scripture. He also writes, he's so, supposedly a doctor, a PhD of eschatology. Okay, Mr. Brilliant Tim LaHaye was a moron. He even has you believe in the Ezekiel 38 war. It begins uh, at, at the beginning of the tribulation and right before it. No, it does not. The Ezekiel 38 war is way into the tribulation. It becomes part and fills in with Armageddon. Uh, let's see, yeah, the, he writes, uh, Tim LaHaye tells you the Antichrist, it possess, he writes his people from the dead. I read a lot of his, I read a couple of his books back in the 80s. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, several times when I was reading LaHaye's books and I saw his videos and stuff, I would scratch my head and go, it doesn't say that in the Bible. And he never gives people the actual picture, billions will die. And he makes it look like, oh, people are going to turn around and give their lives up to the Lord left and right. Not really. Only a remnant's going to be saved. Yeah, there's going to be revival. Yes. But he makes it, he completely distorts that. Uh, anyway, there's other minor things he's got wrong. Please know that he's not this authority. Don't use a charlatan that pumps you for, to buy his books like Joel Rosenberg as your biblical authority people. Read your Bible, not Tim LaHaye, not Jerry Jenkins, not uh, Hal Lindsey, not Joel Rosenberg. Don't read their books as your Bible. Please don't.
And there's some stuff here. Anyone who tries to expose the Zionists, immediately they will brand you, brand you as anti-Semitic. Yep, there's all this stuff on that. It also shows you that the Association for Hebrew Catholics, how these lay missionaries are literally connected with the Jesuits, are connected with the Kabbalists. It's all in here. Read it for yourself. I won't read this. How the Trinity literally is connected with the Kabbalah and the three triads. Anyway, so let me finish here. Thank you, Lord. Even so, come soon. Until that day, Lord, sustain us by your grace. Amen. Maranatha.